What's up, everyone? It's your boy Shaggy here coming to you with another episode for a Twisted Path to Renown. I have to do a little bit of a sidestep here. We actually did find a sewing machine inside of the farm. So my last video, I did suggest that there wasn't going to be a spawn there anymore. But it looks like there's a sewing machine that can spawn in the corner. Sometimes it's four bottles of beer and sometimes it can be an, a can sealer, but I haven't seen the can sealer, so I can't confirm that quite yet. But I have a pretty good source that tells me that we do have the spawn here as well as a couple of other places. Today we're going to be talking about the keys and different strategies that you can use in this brave new world now that the game has updated and changed considerably. I'm going to show you guys where to find the keys and what strategies are best to use to go inside of those buildings as a solo but you can definitely do this as duos or trios or any sort of group squad okay so starting off at farm farm is going to be patrolled by three ai that are going to be along the riverside to the northeast stretching from basically james sullivan extract all the way to the medic house just along the river here I wouldn't say that it's very common, sometimes they don't spawn there, but if you check this area and you see the three-man patrol, you're likely going to get a key drop from those bodies. They do seem a little bit tenacious, it's hard to fight three AI at once as a solo, so be sure to try and get some sort of cover, maybe use the rocks from above and generally just get their aggro, hit those headshots and try to rotate and, and keep moving around, try not to be a still target. Because the more stationary you are, the more shots you're going to take. And from 3 AI, even if it is only pepper boxes or musketoons, they're definitely going to hit pretty hard and sometimes they might even knock you. When you do get the key, you can pretty much just infiltrate right into the farm without aggroing the actual AI at farm. This can be done easier with using a disguise such as the bandit's disguise. It, it definitely depends on what compound you're going to. But farm as well as the village, you want to have a bandit's disguise. I'm going to show you how easy it is, even with a military disguise. It's not going to be a perfect science, but generally you can tell when there's going to be AI patrolling past the building, especially if you've already made it inside. But as you can see, there's a couple of patrol people here and we're able to just easily slip by, run inside, unlock the door and shut it behind us and making sure that we're not being spotted through the window. But once you're inside, you can find the spice on the rack. There's uh, usually going to be the, the easier to find stuff like parsley or thyme. Um, not usually. I don't really find sage or black pepper, but black pepper was there that time. And I've yet to find garlic inside of this place. However, you can find a cauldron or a pot on the mantle by the fireplace, as well as a litany of general items that you can use for barters, as well as selling on the auction house, as well as that, as I said before, the box in the corner sometimes can spawn the can sealer as well as the sewing machine. And then it's as easy as just listening for the AI, opening the door, making sure the coast is clear and slipping away unnoticed. Next up is going to be the Barry key. We've got our patrol that's going to be on the northeast side of Barry, behind Barry basically where the entrance is. These guys are going to have a bit of a stronger weapons than most of the other bandit patrols that you get keys from. And make sure you don't aggro the Fort Berry itself. Bring a lot of heals as well as maybe some bandage and splint. And once you've dropped these guys, you can sometimes get lucky and actually find three berry keys. I've actually had it where there's been zero berry keys on them. So it's kind of a bit of a swing of the pendulum in terms of where your RNG and your luck is. But these guys are fairly easy to find. There's not going to be too many three-man patrols. Don't get distracted by the two-man patrol in the front of Barry or the two other ones that go by the old hut. Those guys are not going to be ones that are going to drop keys. It's always going to be the three-man patrols. And as long as you don't aggro the Barry fort itself, you should be able to slip away pretty easily with your booty. Now, the Barry patrol is going to drop some fairly good rifles. However, if you are in need of a rifle really quickly that doesn't need crafting, I would go to mine and actually kill the two guys that are stand in the front area before you go to Hope Valley. Once you kill those guys, if you don't have the aggro or the exclamation marks to the bottom right, you are going to be pretty well covered to be able to grab their, their ammo and their weaponry. Sometimes they're going to drop 45s or likely just going to drop 44s, but you might get lucky and get both and see you get yourselves a 44 and a 45 with pretty decent durability. One has 69%, one has 58%. 
And they're definitely going to be stronger ammo types than what you would get from, say, the berry patrol that I had just showed before. Next up is going to be Annie's Village. This three-man patrol is going to be starting from the most eastern side of the swamp, moving northwest towards Annie's itself. Pretty much all of these patrols are going to be going along a path. So if you don't see them along this path, I would say just try and come back later. Either somebody's already dropped them or they haven't spawned in and there's just no way to find them. So I usually if I don't see them along this side of the swamp, then I don't deal with it. These guys are not going to be super hard, but again, it is three AI shooting you at the same time. So you will take quite a bit of damage if you don't play the cards correctly. You use cover if you need to to drop them and try to find either the Smith's key, Miller's key or Johnson's key. This time we found the Smith's key. I would say Smith's key is probably the least of my favorite keys, but more common than the others. And as you can see, the ammo types that you can get from these guys are not going to be nearly as good as the ones you find at mine. However, sometimes you're going to get a 44 with a scope on it, even though it is only about 37% durability on this one. Now, again, I usually suggest trying to bring some sort of a disguise that would fit you in with the bandits, because if you're wearing Native American or military disguise, you're going to be spotted a lot further away. The village is one of those ones where you don't really want to get aggro. It's one of the worst case scenarios because there are so many AI there and they will kind of swarm you as well as the wolves kind of seem to like the action and they seem to get drawn in. So you might have yourself two different entities chasing you and killing you and losing you all the progress you had made. And once you're all healed up from that patrol, I would suggest using the riverside, trying not to get too close to the river, but obviously using as much cover as you need to be able to get to the right side of the Annie's village or the north side if you're thinking of it more navigationally. The Smith's cabin is going to be the smallest one on the left side. And generally, you're going to get some fairly good barter items in here, some money from this little counter table. Other than that, though, you're not going to find a whole heck of a lot. There's no more machinery that spawns in here. There's a couple of weapon components and you might find a belt buckle or some sort of money item. But for the most part, I don't really enjoy doing Smith's key runs very often. You can find canvas cloth as well as a bit of cotton and some things like rum or some cans on the shelving there. So it's definitely not a terrible spawn rate, but there's definitely not going to be some high tier stuff in there. And that's probably why it is a more common key to grab from that patrol. And once you've gotten your stuff, just get out of there. I would say the toilet spawns don't have anything good anymore. They used to have some money items and certain things, but I'm going to keep checking just in case. And hey guys, if you like the video, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and comment in the section below what you think about the changes in the update, as well as there is a 10% off promo code for Shaka10 to be used towards buying the game. So if you have anybody in mind, do let them know so that they can get that extra 10% off the already at sale price for this game. And heck, if you got any ideas for what videos you want to see next, I'm all ears and I'd love to hear from you. So please let me know in the comments section below. Okay, back to the task at hand. We're going to be back at the patrol again to get our Johnson key. This time I used a little bit more caution to try to snipe these guys rather than being up close and grenading three AI. The grenades don't necessarily kill in one hit. They do damage them quite considerably. But it's always good to have a little bit of a hill or some sort of a vantage point that you can use to stop yourself from getting hit by every shot. And definitely if you're reloading, I would use a tree to get yourself that cover you require if you're doing a little one-on-one -on -one against the AI. This time we found ourselves a rifle with 44 ammo, but again, it's really low percentage durability. So it's one of those things that I would still suggest going to the mine if you want to get yourself a decent rifle with some good ammo in a quick and dirty grab and run type of scenario. Now with the Johnson key, it's actually going to be on the south side of the building structures in the village. So I highly suggest bringing a bandit disguise for this one. Generally, what you need to do is change your shoes if you got armor on. But if you do need to, you can always just put on the whole outfit just so that you're making sure that you've got yourself that bandit disguise. But shoes and taking off the hat is generally going to be just enough to get you from a military outfit to a bandit outfit if you need to. Um, there might be some little bit of a nuance there, but I just thought I would let you guys know if you're in case you're trying to get out or you're trying to go into a compound uh, and you need a specific disguise. Okay, so coming from the south side of the map, 
There's going to be patrols all over the place. People are going to be staring right at you. You can run right by them, generally with this disguise. And even if you don't and you do get that aggro, you can always just run inside and get yourself some cover. You've got a frying pan, a bunch of food, a can sealer. The Johnson house room key is definitely going to give you exactly what you need if you're looking for that can sealer, as well as there are going to be some spices on the rack there. With this one, I was a little bit unlucky. There was no spices on that rack. But there is a dipper, obviously that frying pan, and a lot of different spawn loots for different things like gun components that you need to craft, as well as some money items if you are looking for that type of stuff. I will say that this room is definitely going to give you the more sought after or harder to find spices. So this is obviously going to be the harder area to go get yourself some spices. So it's probably going to be the higher tier spices, quote unquote. I was able to find sage here. I still have yet to find garlic, but I assume that it's probably going to be spawning in here. And I have been told that there are reports of the caravan camp having spices, but it is not a guarantee. I would say it's probably going to be mid to low tier spawn looting there anyways. But if it does spawn, you can give it a shot. See if you find any caravan camp spices. However, you're probably not going to get the ones that you need that are going to be of the most use, which would probably be coming from this Johnson room area. All right, so back over to the north side of Annie's village. We've got the last of the keys, Miller's house key. Again, make sure you're going to be watching out for that aggro that you really don't want to incur in this village. And once you get yourself inside, this one's actually not going to be that bad for spices either. This one probably I would say is a tie between Johnson and Miller's and Miller's I found is actually probably the more harder to get E from the spawns. As you can see that we got ourselves some hearts there, some pretty mid tier components, but a lot of food items as well as a lot of the barter items that are useful. And on this shelf, you're going to find yourself the Majorums, uh, maybe garlic who knows there's probably going to be black pepper that spawns there as well but that looks like the higher tier of the spices inside of miller's as well as a bunch of different food and a bunch of different steel items on the shelves there again the coveted cans very hard to find but usually very useful especially if you're doing these type of runs and again you've got yourself the room here this used to be a pretty good room for a lot of different stuff but now it's again a bit more nerfed you're probably only going to find mid-tier bags sometimes you'll find vault extension permits and again these are really these are going to be really good to sell on the market if you've already gotten your vault extensions because a lot of new players are going to be looking for that stuff and they might spend top dollar to find the superiors the advanced and even maybe some of the basics Alright y'all, well thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, let me know if you have any questions uh, in the comments section and we'll try and get some more info out there for you guys soon, especially about the berry key, uh, especially about, oh looks like you can find oil here as well, I forgot about that, um, and especially about the medic house key. I need to do a medic house key run and see what is inside there uh, so we can get to the bottom of all of these new changes and updates to the game. Oh, and hey, look at that. There's a frying pan as well. Again, guys, thanks for watching. And don't forget to that, hit that like, subscribe, and comment in the section below. And give me that sweet algorithm juice. Let me know kind of what you guys want to see. It kind of is a good indicator of what is popular and what is something that needs to be uh, worked on a bit more. And uh, we'll catch you again real soon. Ciao for now.